uh, I've known Will for about a year, and a lot of you guys know me from my channel talking about solar. And one of the things I really like about Will is that he takes it to the next level, but also in a way that's easy to understand. And so when I contacted him a couple of months ago and asked him if he would consider coming out here, and he agreed, I was just over the moon. And uh, so here he is. He, he came in from Las Vegas to be here and spend some time with us and talk a little bit about solar, kind of help take a little of the mystery out of it. And so let's give him a real warm welcome for being here. What do you say? Yeah, we're going to talk about some of the, like, the safety things that I think everybody should know with solar power systems, because if you screw it up, you can catch your whole rig on fire and that's the end of it. So, um, and I want to also take a lot of questions from the crowd and I think that will be a good way to direct like the, um, the flow of the conversation and try to figure out what you guys need to know with solar power systems. And I do not want to put you guys to sleep because electricity stuff can be very, very boring. Yeah, let's kick this off first with talking about cheap wire and cheap stuff on Amazon because a lot of people see these inverters and um, wire that is cheaper than other options and you're like, oh, it's on Amazon, it has lots of good reviews, I'm gonna buy it and then I'm done, right? And a couple months later it burns out or it catches something or it melts something else or it can possibly catch something on fire and it just drives me nuts because everyone wants to save money with solar power components but the moment you do that you're putting yourself at risk for just so many problems later on. Um, even if you spend a little bit more, but it's still like a cheap Chinese inverter, you're gonna replace it every couple of years. And over the years, people spend so much money on these solar power systems, and you don't really have to. If you use the right stuff from the beginning, you don't have to touch it for the next 10 to 20 years. I just really want people to understand that. Like if you do it right the first time, you're done. And other things you can be cheap about in life. Like you can be really lazy with some things, but with electrical, you can't. You have to do it right. So uh, yeah, cheap wire is like one of the first ones that I want to talk about. If you go on Amazon right now, there is copper clad aluminum wire and you want to avoid it like the plague. Every inverter problem I've seen lately and overheating wires that can cause fires is because of this cheap stuff. And it's like 80 to 90% of the listings on Amazon. If you can do that and you buy pure copper wire, you will save your rig, you will save the family or anybody that's sleeping in the rig. Like you want pure copper wire. I don't want to tell you the specifics. Buy copper wire and spend the extra money that's it. The next thing is batteries. So a lot of people here have lead acid batteries, right? And everyone's used to it and they seem safe because a lot of people haven't had any problems. And they think that lithium is scary because they can catch on fire or certain chemistries can. And all batteries are dangerous, no matter if it's lead acid, valve regulated sealed lead acid or even lithium iron phosphate no matter which chemistry you use all batteries are dangerous and what I mean by that is that they hold you know energy potential and they have charge and if you have one wire that trips or something that overheats and you have an overload scenario if there's something combustible nearby like a piece of wood again your whole rig is up in fire so whether you think that your rig is safe or not if you have a battery in there it is a potential danger no matter how you frame it solar charge controllers everybody messes up the size of wire going from the battery to the solar charge controller if you do that you can catch your rig on fire all right you need it to be the proper size that's specced in the manual with pure copper. Also, those wire gauge charts that you see all over the place, those are for copper wire. If you use that aluminum, copper clad aluminum wire or cheap, other cheap wires, um, those charts do not apply. So you can really screw yourself over if you use the chart and you say, oh, I'm going to be smart and safe and use this chart and then I'm going to buy this wire off of Amazon but then you connect your solar charge controller and it's not the right size because that that guide is for copper wire 
um, you can you can destroy everything because of that. I did go to college, but it was for um, health sciences, so I did do physics and all that. But where I learned everything for electrical was when I was a kid, I built robotics and animatronics and long-range drones. Um, and this was when I was like 13 years old to about 15. That's when I was coding a lot. So like, once you have that, solar power is just, <laughs> I just ramble. I just, I'm, it's super easy and fun. It's like battery, solar panel, da da. Typically with these RVs, they're gonna be running at 12 volts and most of the golf cart batteries are six volts and they do fit the the space perfectly and as long as it can accommodate the height and you have enough room to work on the top with the wires it does work well and you can just throw in two or you can throw in four and if you have a friend to wire it up in uh, you know various ways so it creates 12 volts then it will work perfectly also though if you're using golf cart batteries and they're flooded you need to have a large enough solar array to accommodate it uh, it is very difficult to take care of flooded batteries with solar with the equalized charge and keeping them topped off and if you use it at night and then it's discharged and then it takes all day to charge up again they do not like that so it's a big problem with flooded batteries and solar um, totally different than lithium you can leave the lithium batteries you know at a low state of charge or like 20 to 40 percent all day long and it's fine it loves it but not with those. Um, also, look at the gross vehicle weight loading thing with your suspension. There is recommendations on battery sizes for all RVs and vans. You need to read that spec and make sure that you do not exceed it because, yeah, you do not want to exceed. You can crash your vehicle if it's loaded improperly. A lot of those, the generators on one side and the propanes on that side, and then you have the battery compartment right there and it's distributed so that all four tires kind of have the same weight. I mean, you are constrained by the size of these roofs on these RVs and vans. So like, just fill it, you know? I mean, it's pretty cheap nowadays. Cause, cause back in my day, I'll tell you something. <laughs> those solar panels were not cheap when I started. Um, just a 120 watt panel was $600. That's, that's my first system. Nowadays, you can get from Rich Solar, these Indian panels, they're like, uh, or I mean from India, they're like $60, $70 on sale. I mean, you can buy them used. Yeah, Santin Solar. I mean, the price of solar is cheap. Just fill your roof with them. You can't go wrong there, especially if you have flooded batteries. You want to make it as big as you can. When you say flooded batteries, you're not including AGM in that, are you? Okay. No. One thing I want to drive home a point is that AGM can be just as dangerous as any other battery chemistry. It does not gas. Yes, it's a recombinant system. So it, it creates the gas and it uses these valves and then it puts it back into the battery. It's still dangerous. It can still gas. If you overcharge it, the, it has an overpressure valve and it will gas. So, I mean... You can make it sound nice because there is no gassing and there's no equalized charge and stuff, but they're dangerous. All batteries are dangerous. With AGM, the charge cycle life can be increased, but if you look at the data sheet, it's 500 to 1,000 cycles. With lithium iron phosphate, um, I know it costs more, you know, I get it. <laughs> they're not cheap, right? Lithium batteries are ridiculous, but they are like 100 times cheaper than lead acid in the long run. And you could argue that, oh, well, we don't know that, and these are new technologies. But actually, lithium iron phosphate, we have the data cycle um, studies from like the 80s. So something that people don't realize is these batteries are very old. The only new thing that we have is manufacturing methods, and that's what's brought in the price down. These are very old batteries, lithium batteries. It's same with solar cells. We've had solar cells for so long. That's why we know so much about them. And again, we just have better manufacturing. It's easier to make. And uh, solar cell manufacturing is crazy, though. It's, <laughs> it's like one of the most synthetic things that humans make. Like, the temperatures required to make a silicon wafer for a solar cell are just excessive. Um, it's, it's just incredible. You would never find that, like, just floating around the universe if you were on a spaceship you won't find a solar cell like they are so weird it's the same with like lasers too lasers are you will never find coherent wave patterns just floating about through the universe like we made it like humans made that so it's pretty interesting stuff people will literally argue with me for on the forum and on the youtube comments to be like well i've been doing this for 30 years and i'm like dude you, please just consider some new technologies like 
Adding water, the sulfuric acid, it can blow up, gassing, catch on fire. Like, I don't understand why people stand by them. People are so accustomed to it, though. You know, they're like, oh, I've been doing this for so long, it hasn't caused me any problems. But if, if you do the math and you think about input and output or the what's called colimbic efficiency, it's just a fancy word or Faradaic efficiency, like how much power you put in and how much power you get out. With lithium, specifically lithium iron phosphate, it's like 98 to 99 percent, right? You put in 100 watts, you get 99 out, right? With a flooded Trojan, the golf cart batteries where guys are like, oh, I've got 500 amp hours. Well, guess what? You get about 70 watts out out of 100. So it's, it's think about how much more money you have to spend on solar panels to push that extra. I mean, that's a few hundred dollars. I mean, it's crazy how much people spend on these systems. And they could save a ton of money by making a smaller system that's more efficient and more logically designed. So, yeah, something that people don't realize. Just You have to like do the math for all these things and realize that it can be really cheap. And also, your point about lithium batteries coming down in price, it is true with manufacturing right now, but I think a huge uh, source of cheap batteries right now Specifically, we could give a, uh, an example. So China sells more electric cars than the entire world's countries put together, right? And they have those old batteries left over. They still work, okay? You can use them. You just need to know how to use them. So what a lot of people are doing now is second life storage lithium batteries. And so the price of those is like one-tenth the cost of a Battleborn. So just to give you a reference, so like a... F um, I don't want to bore you guys to death with the numbers, though, but some of these battery packs are just so cheap. They're, they're way cheaper than lead acid, way cheaper than the Amazon ads. It's so sad, though. People see the AGMs on Amazon. And they're like, oh, like the UB131000. That one specifically, everyone posts on their van blog, right? It gets like 500 cycles. It is the most expensive battery out there, and everybody keeps buying these things. And I'm like, guys, you if, if you do not like your money, buy those. But, oh my gosh, there are so many better options. You can actually weigh it and see how thin the plates are just based off of the weight alone. Like, no magic, no special electrolyte or data sheet stuff. Just just weigh the battery, and you can see it's, it's less bang for your buck in quite a few ways. So a lot of people with lead acids, if you have an old one and a new one, you can't put it together, right? That's just a big no-no. Everyone's known that for years, and you do not want to do that. Um, and it would take like 20 minutes of talking to explain why. But when you have lithium batteries and they have protection circuits on each individual battery, you can connect them in parallel. So if you want to later down the road add another Battleborn or you know a lithium iron phosphate battery with a BMS or a safety management system on there, you just add it to your system. It's very easy. Um, the one thing that you want to check though with all batteries that you put into parallel is you want to see if one of them is bad and those batteries are used and you never know if one could be bad no matter how many times you check it repeatedly and, and you check the voltage. So what I like to do is I put an amp meter between two batteries. So let's say we have two 12 volt batteries and we have a black wire going from the negative to the negative. So it's still a 12 volt battery, right? What I would do is put an amp meter between the positive and the positive. And if one battery is pushing tons of power to the other one, that means there's a shorted cell. That means that BMS is not doing something. That means something's wrong on this side. Or if it's feeding the other battery, you know that energy is going that way. And you can buy these for $15 on Amazon. I'm going to make a video on this, actually, because I need to show it. You know, like show you. See, here's the number. Here's the $15 Amazon thingy. Just do it, and like then it'll be done. But uh, you want to check it. Um, all used batteries. That's the thing, though. It's like I love used lithium batteries, and they are cheap. But uh, when you have a new battery, and everything's matched, and you have high-quality stuff, you don't have to touch it for 10 or 20 years you're done, right? You don't have to think, you don't have to check it, you just set it up, you're done. No more thinking. Valence batteries, the BMS, as long as it, the BMS is intact, even if one cell is bad, you can still use the battery. That's something that people don't realize with a lot of these lithium batteries is there's like redundancy built into them. For example, let's take like a Tesla because everyone's using the Tesla battery modules. You just connect it to a 24 volt inverter, 
and it works, right? You don't have to think, you just connect it. You, you have to have a low voltage disconnect and some other things, but it's easy to use. If one of those cells shorts in the next 15 years, the rest of the battery will still work. It won't just stop, right? Even with lithium iron phosphate, if one of the cells in one of the packs shorts and it's done, um, that's why they actually do not have individual cell fusing on some of those lithium iron phosphate packs in the batteries is because you can have one short out and it just will keep working. So people, I, it's so sad though because people are so accustomed to um, other lithium ion chemistries and that's not the case. Like your cell phone, once it's done, it's done and it's not holding a charge and you're mad and you have to buy another phone. But with other chemistries, you can use these things for, I don't even know how long. In the laboratory, we can get some insane numbers um, we already have studies where you can get like, you know, 10 to 20,000. Like, we already have a UL listed battery by Simplify that is guaranteed to 10,000 charge cycles. So if, you know, an AGM is rated for 500 to 1,000 and you can buy one battery that lasts to 10,000 and it's UL listed, that is the cheapest thing on the planet, and it's new. It's cheaper than used because the used, you already have reduced capacity, and you don't know how they're used. So I don't know. Yeah, there's lots of misconceptions because people see the first price, and you have to, like, think about the whole thing, you know. I try to make the videos now. I'll do technical information. At the end, I'll be like, yes or no. That's it. You're done. No more thinking. Just... No more math. There you go. And then in the middle, I'm like just do it showing all the equations and stuff. Because I know, you know, for a lot of you guys, you just want something that works, that powers your thing, and you're done. You know, you don't, I, yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, for me, it might be a fun little hobby and like it's, you know, it's a game and I get to mess with it, but you just want something that works. That's it. You know, you don't want to think and, and mess with it all day long. See, I see a lot of people with vans and RVs. And they get like a flooded battery system and they get a cheap Chinese inverter and the cheap wire. And then every like couple months you see them messing with it at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, dang it, this thing's not working again. And like, you just, it sucks. It sucks so bad to <laughs> deal with that. And uh, that's what I love about those sponsors, man. They send me this junk and people are so excited. They're like, oh, I can't wait. This thing. And people get so excited. They're on the forums. They're on the YouTube comments. They're like, this one's going to be great. I'm so happy. And then you get it and everything is just so trashy about it. So these products are just horrible. It's just a cash grab right now. So a lot of these companies, they're just short-term companies and um, they'll say made in America and assembled in USA. If you want it to last a long time, you need to buy a battery with a warranty. Because who cares about the chemistry or the BMS? Because they can all fail. Whether it's UL listed or not, everything can fail when it comes to electronics. No matter how perfect a system, these guys will make it sound like they have the best system. Okay, They'll make it sound like they have the best battery. But you need a solid warranty from someone that's not going to close down shop. But yeah, how do you get a good warranty? So these companies can fail and close down, or they're just distributors and they relabel it. So, gosh, um, Battleborn's cool because I know they're not going to close. They already have enough market sh or you know value and people like them, and they're really nice. So that's why they're succeeding, and they have good technology, which is good. But it costs a lot. I get it. I mean, those things are 950 for a 100 amp hour, um, with the cycle life and oh God. But now let's 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 talk about for the average consumer. You just want to throw a battery in your rig. I would go for the cheapest, junkiest piece of junk in the world, and then throw a ton of solar panels on my rig because I don't care. Who cares about efficiency when solar panels are cheap? Go to Santan Solar, throw as many as you can on that roof, and uh, deal with the efficiency losses. What you don't want to be cheap with, like I said earlier, the wire. Needs to be copper, needs to be proper size. You also need um, expensive circuit breakers for any system. There's all these cheap Chinese ones, and you'll buy a 150 amp circuit breaker, and it trips at 100 amps. And I wouldn't even trust that around any... It's, it's, um, so you, you can't cheap out with the other stuff. But yeah, if, if you have some cheap batteries off of Craigslist, you could throw them in there and put a bunch of cheap solar panels. It works. But uh, if you want it to last for 20 years and you want to be cheap, 
then it's going to be different. You need lithium iron phosphate with warranty. Simplify has the best warranty long term because they have a 10,000 charge cycle life. And that comes out to like pennies. But um, how long are you going to actually use the batteries for? You know, um, are you going to be in your rig for 20 years? So you have to answer, ask that question to yourself as well. And do you actually, yeah, it's so many variables. <laughs>